I'm James from Fine Music, and in this how-to video, I'll be taking you through a few simple ways you can create a click track or backing track in GarageBand for your ensemble. Before starting, you'll need to have a piece selected, and for anyone doing this for the first time, I'd suggest picking something that's super simple. For this video, I'll be using Adam Arnold's March of the Diggers. If you need a click track for a piece that has multiple time signatures, I'd suggest doing this in Sibelius instead. However, I'll cover this in another video. So to start off, we need to comb through the score, marking down any important expression markings and rehearsal marks, taking note of their bar position. We also need to get a total bar count. It's a good idea to keep a tally of this somehow. You'll need to refer to this later. Take care to include repeated sections when you're counting. Okay, so now we have all the important info down, Go ahead and boot up a new empty project in GarageBand and choose a software instrument. I'll be using musical typing as seen here to play a woodblock software instrument in this session. But you could use a drum kit loop, add a virtual drummer track or use the Apple loop library to create this instead. We are keeping it simple here. So first, click on the sound library in the top left corner. Click on percussion then Latin percussion, your choice of course. Have a play with the different sounds. Once you've picked two sounds for the click track, set the time signature and tempo for the project. 4-4 is the default setting, so that's already done for me, but I'll select a proud 100 BPM for me in the tempo option. You can just click and drag. Now, before we go on any further, because this piece is 72 bars long in total, I'll need to extend the project length out to encompass that many bars. Don't worry about getting it exactly right here, as only the bars with audio information in them will be captured in the final bounce. Before we get started recording, make sure the metronome function is turned on and you have a set of headphones connected to avoid metronome sounds interfering with the voice recording. By default, you'll be given a one bar count in before the recording will be captured. You can change that here. Once ready, you can hit the record button here or press the R key on the keyboard. Then play in your click with the keyboard. One or two bars will suffice as we'll be looping the section instead of playing it for 72 bars. Once it's recorded, we will use the quantize feature to make sure it's perfectly in time. Click on the scissors icon in the top left. Then under time quantize, I'll select the quarter note option. This will move each note I just played to the nearest crotchet beat. It's now perfectly in time. However, if for example you were playing quarter beats in 6-8 time, you would need to select the eighth note option instead. Now we can move the cursor to the top right section of the track we just recorded until the mouse changes to the looping tool. Drag the recording out for the duration of the piece, adding in two extra bars so that we can record a count in at the beginning. If you were wanting to change the click beat at some point, you would simply stop, record the next section the same way and repeat until the end. As you're doing this, Now's a good time to add an arrangement track to help keep track of each section of the piece, as you will be going through and making audio cues later. Navigate up to Track, Add Arrangement Track, then press the plus button here and drag each section to suit the arrangement. You can double click and rename as you go along. Always keep in mind the repeat bars and extra bars at the beginning when marking down these positions. Now that that's done, all that's left is adding the tempo changes. As before, navigate to the top menu. Under Track, click Add Tempo Track, and where appropriate, add tempo changes to the track by clicking along the line to add points, then dragging the lines to suit. In this piece, there is a poker rail marked at bar 56, so adding in repeated bars and the count in, that brings its position to bar 62. Now, to add our vocal cues and count in, I'll add another track. Navigate to the plus button over the track headers here and click create a new vocal track. Same way as before, 
record your counting and any other important cues throughout the track, again, being careful to place them in the right place. For example, I'd recommend recording the bar count at the start of each section for beginner bands. One, two, three, four. All that's left now is to bump out the project and share it with your students. So first we need to turn off the metronome function. Then come up to the share button, click export song to disk. Name the file, select a location, select a file type, then click export. The project will now bounce and it's ready to be sent out. However, we can also supplement the click track by creating a backing track for students to practice with. Recordings of published pieces can usually be found for download on publishers' websites, Brolga Music and the American Hal Leonard site, to name a few. But the Victorian School Music Festival site has linked sound files available for download on all currently listed works. Once you have your recording downloaded, same as before, we'll create a new empty project in GarageBand using a vocal track to start. Then, change the tempo and time signature just as before to suit the start of the recording. Click and drag the recording so that it lines up with the bars in the GarageBand project. Add another vocal track as before, and record a count in for any other cues you want. And that's it, you can bounce the project just as you did your last Two, project. Three, four. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions about this video, please contact me via my email address, james at finemusiconline.com.au.